Joining us on set now, David Wong. David is in charge of the uh, Tobago arm, basically, of the Trinidad Tobago Chamber of Industry and Commerce. David, good morning. Thanks good morning. for joining us. Now, yesterday, Tobago received a lot of attention uh, in the budget. Some are saying it's a lot of politics playing up there, but your thoughts on the allocation given? Well, it is a, a substantially larger allocation than previously. I think last year, our recurrent inputs were about 1.8 billion, and this year we're just over 2 billion. So um, I'm a little confused with how we're going to find that much more recurrent expenditure. I'm sure the THA will do what's necessary to cover that. The capital. The capital budget is 350 million and 800, 840 plus million uh, by other ministries. Um, this we hope that we'll see good investments in the tourism sector going forward. In the tourism sector, looking at Tobago, obviously there is an apparent rift between the current administration, the THA, and let's take the politics out of it. But how much has that rift really affected our business opportunities and life in Tobago? Oh. I don't really look at the politics, so I'm glad you want to take it out of the system, the discussion here. The, how is it going to affect us? I think it's, it's, it's going to be strained, but I think it can be positive because there is an agreement by both the Ministry of Tourism and the Tobago House of Assembly to work together going forward. And then the minister said it clearly that um, the ministry intends to work in conjunction with the THA. I think we have to understand even bro more broadly um, how tourism is linked. Uh, we see sports and planning doing sports events and sports, I want to say sports tourism, they call it, he's, he referred to it as sports marketing uh, going forward for events and, and hosting um, foreign athletes and so forth. And I think we need to understand the, the possibilities that lie within that. Looking at uh, tourism and Tobago, that is obviously, you know, when we think of Tobago, what do you think are the major challenges right now Tobago faces? Um, number one is always marketing, but we also need to focus heavily on plant upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, we, we need to ensure that our hotel room stock is, is growing as well as upgrading and developing. We need all the supporting ancillary services to be reignited. I mean, a lot of them have come to a standstill in the past years, and we're hoping that the tourism um, fund that's come on stream and the government loan guarantee will encourage people to get involved and get back on their feet and get their businesses going. How much has business been affected in Tobago as a result of the inability to deal with these problems? Well, I, I had a discussion with one person who recently moved to Tobago mm -hmm. um, in the last month or two, and he indicated that, you know, he couldn't find um, a restaurant to eat at, mm -hmm. you know, after a couple of nights. So it, it's, it's But is it the opportunity? Now, if we say, okay, this one individual cannot find a restaurant to eat in in the night, is there really the opportunity for someone to open a restaurant when, uh, 12 hours a day? Is there the, the crowd? Is there really the market viability to to ensure survivability, basically, of the, the entity? And that's where the holistic development comes into play. We, I mean, you can't sit down and play chicken and egg in an economy. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to get on board and get going. Um, there are a lot of efforts in train to develop room stock, to develop um, sites, to, to develop all the ancillary services that go into tourism. Uh, so even airlift is on the grow. You know, we're looking at securing uh, more flights. I believe Virgin has um, committed to a second winter flight this coming up here. So we need to focus on developing holistically. We need to take a chance on ourselves and go forward. Taking a chance on ourselves, were you satisfied with the initiatives? Now let's look at uh, the, the numbers, breaking the numbers down. Uh, you talk about the significantly larger increase Tobago got this year as opposed to any other year. Where is this money going to go and who is really the, the Ministry of Tobago Development was uh, introduced under the People's Partnership Government. How effective has this ministry been in terms of aligning uh, the needs of Tobago with the THA and the central government? Well, I have not heard, we have not heard, the chairman has not heard much from the Minister of Tobago Development um, since the last reshuffling. Dr. Baker has been in Tobago, but I mean, we do expect a lot more out of him. But we, and it's not been forthcoming, so we're a little disappointed there. The budget allocations of 2.356 billion for the Tobago House of Assembly this fiscal year. Uh, I'm going to be interesting, interested to see how it's it's used, utilized. You know, planning, implementation are always key words, and I guess what everybody said here so far this morning. 
uh, implementation and the problems facing Tobago, that of the airbridge, supply of uh, general material, regular resources, is that still a problem today? I don't think it's a problem. I think lack of planning and management is, is where the problems lie in. Uh, and we don't understand what is necessary. And then we have to tell the people what's going on. You know, if, we're gonna, if we have other flights available or more sailings available, then we need to be able to, to indicate that to the traveling public so they can plan and utilize. And then planning is important. People don't plan vacations to Tobago or anywhere else. Um, in 24 hours. They, they like to be in front. Now when we think of Tobago, we think of hotels and we think of tourism, but really and truly there were a number of industrial plans as well. Uh, the Cove Estate, what is the status on that? Well Cove recently opened its uh, first factory shell. There's a, a door manufacturer and a metal framework individual going inside of there. Uh, it holds positive. Let's see what they can come up with. You know, I mean, if there's a lot of construction to go on, uh, there's a great deal of possibility coming out of this budget for construction. These persons in their factories may have an opportunity to get a good stronghold into the, into the markets. Looking at uh, the possibilities of even aligning the workforce for Tobago, because we can see that we're setting up industry, ensuring that there are regular supplies of uh, basic resources and even labor force. Is there, is there the, the labor there, the availability of the type of labor needed? Sadly, I don't think so. But there needs to be a lot of training and investment into the development of it. You know, I mean, again, you, you, we can look at which comes first, the chicken or the egg, uh, which comes first, the labor or the tourists, which comes first. We can sit down and argue about it all day long. And there needs to be a holistic development around everything, the human capacity, the, the infrastructure, the, the services, everything. The overall development plan for Tobago, is there? Now there's a national development plan. Do you think enough emphasis? Uh, but yet people in Tobago say that Tobago is special, that their needs are special. Uh, the development pace should be a little different. Do you agree with that? I think Tobago has to have its own planning, its own decision making, and the ability to chart its course based on what is available to it. You know, uh, and with that we will be able to yes, govern how we go forward and chart our way forward. If you had to look at uh, the way Tobago is moving forward, what advice would you now give the, the THA or the executing agencies uh, uh, since they're getting this money? Ah, oh, well, not since they, they've been always getting uh -huh. a similar sort of uh, intervention. Focus, we need to focus, we need to go forward. I mean, coming out of the minister's uh, presentation yesterday, it seems like tourism is going to be a whole new focus, mm -hmm. new energy, new time, and possibly a lot more money. And I guess along that line, we need to focus and make up our minds and then build our diversification around it. What are this, the industries that can be built in, in Cove or on the island that will support tourism? What is the role of Tobago, you think, uh, beyond tourism? Do you think really we can see Tobago as, as anything other than a destination for sun, sea, and sand? And then if we look at it that way, how are we going to differentiate that market to other destinations in the Caribbean? The, the potential for to, Tobago to supply a lot of other unique products, niche items. We do have a lot of jams and jellies, we have soaps, um, a lot of different areas. And if we can create consumption via tourism, uh, offset some of the skills of economy going forward, then we can definitely see that these producers can create niche items that will um, have an opportunity to get into niche markets in the hotel and tourism industry. Now, getting into niche markets, what do you think is that? Now, we, Trinidad has positioned itself as the business, uh, for the business tourists. What is Tobago positioning itself as? Tobago has to position itself in tourism, as a, a driver in, in the Caribbean for that, um, and look at the contributions that can be made to the economy via that method, uh, whether it be development or industrial development. Whether it be development, industrial development, development of, tur of the tourism sector. I'm Emma Ramsey, we're now taking a very short break. Don't forget if you have any questions uh, for the panel discussion that's taking place this morning, you can send up www.facebook.com slash TTCIC and the BBM pin, well, that's number 21876F0. I'll see you on the next side of this break.